what's the difference between a LOMA and an elevation certificate? Well, you don't need either one unless FEMA or your local floodplain manager thinks that you're in a flood zone in, a, in what they call special flood hazard area. Both LOMA and an elevation certificate are uh, the name for a bundle of data that a land surveyor is going to provide to uh, to FEMA about your, your property or your building. So, how are they different? So, they're, they're both data that a surveyor provides to FEMA, but how are they different? So I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you how they're different. A LOMA, let's start with a LOMA. A LOMA is used to correct a flood insurance rate map by removing either a structure or a portion of a parcel or both from a flood zone. So you think FEMA has made a mistake on a flood zone. It happens a lot. I've got another video about that. I'll try and link to it in the comments. You think FEMA has made a mistake. Your property or your building has been improperly mapped in the floodplain. The way to correct that mistake and revise or amend the map is with what they call a letter of map amendment. What do you need from your surveyor for a letter of map amendment, a, a, a LOMA application? He needs to do a topographic survey of at least a portion of your property. He needs a detailed mapping of a small portion of the floodplain. He needs a, a if you're pulling out a, a piece of real real estate, he needs a land. He needs to create a land description for that property. And he needs, if you're pulling out a structure, he needs to collect information on the structure, okay? Data about the structure, type of structure, elevation, different components of the, of the structure. So all of those things he needs to do to prepare a LOMA. Again, topo survey, detailed mapping of a small portion of the floodplain, a land description if you're going to pull out land, and a, a survey of the structure, data about the structure if you're going to pull out a, a structure or a building out of the floodplain. Okay, an elevation certificate is used to determine how vulnerable an existing structure is to a flood. So it's not like a LOMA where you're, where you're pulling something out of the flood zone. An elevation certificate is, I know I'm in the flood zone. How far underwater is my building going to be if there's a flood? That's what an elevation certificate is. So an elevation certificate is when you know you're in a flood zone. Okay, so what type of data does the surveyor gather for an elevation certificate? He mostly gathers data on the actual building or structure that's going to be vulnerable to the flood. So what type of data? He needs to know what type of structure it is. We have a whole set of diagrams that FEMA gives us that we have to use. Uh, he's going to survey elevations and different parts of that structure. He's going to uh, look for certain building features. He wants to know where the utilities are and where the propane tank is and if there's an attached or detached garage. And then he's going to want to look at some of the topography, some of the land features around the structure. The surveyor needs to look at all that. So he gathers all that data and he sends it into FEMA. Now, the surveyor doesn't determine how vulnerable your building is to the flood. That's something that FEMA or the floodplain administrator does. The surveyor's just collecting the data and sending that into FEMA so they can make the determination. Now, just a couple of quick footnotes here. Both LOMAs and elevation certificates may require your land surveyor to calculate a base flood elevation. So not all floodplains have a published base flood elevation. And then not all floodplains are flat. Some are sloped. And so depending on where you're at, the surveyor actually has to calculate the elevation of the floodplain in your location. So both kinds, LOMAs and elevation certificates, both kinds of, of data collection and submittal may require your surveyor to calculate a BFE. I bring that up because if you need to have a BFE calculated, that is some extra work for the land surveyor. And then uh, the other note I wanted to mention, the other footnote is, as a general rule, LOMAs are more expensive than elevation certificates. There's more work involved to complete a LOMA as a general rule. So if you need a LOMA to pull something out of the zone, it is going to be more expensive. The good news is, if you can pull your property out of the flood zone with a LOMA, you won't have to pay flood insurance, likely won't have to pay flood insurance. Whereas if your surveyor is doing an elevation certificate, you're probably paying flood insurance. It's just a question of how much. Okay, so there you go. Now you guys know the difference between a LOMA, letter of map amendment, and an EC or an elevation certificate.